all on the line, my friends. Champions League, Europa League, or bust. And welcome back to another episode of Outcast 2 Icons. If you're still enjoying the series, drop a like. That'll be really fancy and whatnot. Today, I thought I'd just start by showing you Juanjo Contreras, the uh, young 17-year-old guy we brought in from Real Oviedo in the summer. I think it was the summer, wasn't it? Uh, for a million pounds, roughly. And I feel like, or was it January? I honestly can't remember. Uh, the main reason I wanted to highlight him is because he's actually played three games for us now. One in the Europa Conference League and two in the league, and has genuinely put up three relatively strong performances for a 17-year-old. And it's just nice to see someone step in and actually be able to do the things I want him to do. Now, obviously, he's a much younger player than Dinko Pavlich, but he's got a determined personality, and I think he could genuinely be a a very good player for us, which is why I want to make sure that he keeps getting some game time. Right now, I don't see that happening, but it's nice to be able to rotate out Pavlish for a player like Contreras without having to worry about putting Milivojev into that spot, because obviously that weakens us elsewhere. And we do, of course, still have our young South Korean uh, coming through in that position as well. So we're starting to get some really nice talent in that area. Also, just a quick note, someone mentioned this, and I did not see it at the time. Yeah, on the bench for Leicester, you'd have noticed a lad called PP. Anyone remember who that is? So yes, he's yet another of the former Dinamo Zagreb players that they immediately sold after they, uh, well, so unceremoniously parted with us. Uh, they, they kept up their spend and they sold him for £17 million, which is at least some decent cash. But still, it's just kind of mad that they just gutted their squad and yet still kept Vlade Strikic, I think. We'll check after this. So we're doing a triple live com today because who doesn't want triple live comps? We've got three games, Brescia, Spal, Lazio. That's the situation. We're in a Champions League battle fight. I still think we're in a good chance of getting Europe. In fact, let's just, uh, can we go, ta no, wait, I don't want to go tactical means, sorry. Sometimes when I leave it on auto continue, it already goes past the fixture screen. Let's, uh, can I do that? Damn it. There we go. That's more like it. So here's the situation. We're five points clear of Napoli, which is really important right now. Uh, those were the team. They were the team that I expected would fall away, uh, as we predicted last season. And this is very true. I didn't anticipate Roma having the season they've had. Although we are kind of neck and neck with them on many ways. And I don't know what the head to head against them is like. That's that could be extremely important. We have a better head to head than Milan, which is very key. But I don't know about Roma. Annoyingly, no. Uh, our head-to-head -head is a two-all draw, but technically, because of the away goal they have, they do have us beat on head-to-head. -head. So, it, it's not ideal. We are going to have to try. I, I just don't see us getting fourth spot. But, you never know. Maybe Roma will bottle it. Maybe we'll bottle it. Who knows? Bit of tiredness creeping in after the last game. I have, of course, had rest on, but it's just very, very difficult. Thankfully, though, after this, it's, it's one game a week. So, we should have nice full-strength squads for the rest of the season. But today's game is going to be a very, very difficult one to get through, I feel like. In fact, extremely difficult. In, to be honest, I feel like Quad Contreras might end up starting here. I, I just don't want kudos in that spot. Lombardo through the middle is not happening, obviously. Uh, Lebert, well, even he's starting to struggle. And we can't have uh, Siggy up front, so Lebert's going to have to play. Okay, so we'll do that. Dionisi. <laughs> Someone made a good point about how my assistant always puts Dionisi in the team. And then I come along and yoink him out again. It's like, why am I a cynic? I know. Poor old Dionisi, eh? Even Glavash is knackered. Uh, it's, it's not ideal. It may have to be a Merlin Kelly special today as well. But I do have a lot of trust in Hojorinho. I'm really curious to see how his stats at the end of the season, match up again compared to the likes of Milivojev and Uriate, because maybe next season he may have just won himself a place in the team, honestly. I'm curious to see how he... Act. If he does it for a second season, then we have to start considering, despite star ratings and attributes, that he's a better player for whatever reason. But it'd be nice to try and figure out why. So that'll be in the analysis video later today at nine o'clock. So, the first of three... Let us go. On a side note, I did actually have a little scouty scout of Jules Gordon. Just have a little less squad reports. They actually don't have a very good squad. They're just greater than the sum of their parts. They've got a few youth players that are kind of interesting. But other than that, their first team is not the best. They're just doing very, very well. I really hope next year Max LeBaire finally drops his sulkiness. It's actually incredible that he's lasted a full season of this. This is it. Three games to go. Can we make Champions League football? Or will we just have to settle for another season in the Europa, but with a strong... And I'd still, I would absolutely still take that. Because getting to better points tally in the league, achieving good things, and going to the semi-finals of a European competition whilst doing all that, I think would still be a step in the right direction as we slowly build this team up. It's very difficult to turn these kind of ships around mid-season or mid-game, I suppose. But maybe we can go one step further. Today is a big day because both Roma and Milan have much more difficult games than we do. Uh, we're all away from home, but they travel to like Torino and Lazio respectively. So this is an opportunity for us. Contreras on the free kick whips it all the way through and it's... 
hit the post. Oh my goodness. Roma have taken the lead against Torino as Milan fall behind in their game. So, oh no. I just can't. Like, really? <laughs> he stood there like... It's like, mate, you're the one that passed it, buddy. I'm almost certain of it. No? Was it Belder? And Rodrigo gives it straight back to him. And then Belder is the one that... Yeah. <laughs> Was it Belder? It was. It was Belder's the one that's like, well, it's like, mate, you're the one that did the bad back pass. Take some responsibility. Things you don't want to see. Uh, I was kind of hoping we could come here and do a Sassuolo special, maybe. Just scrape a 1-0 with a tired team. But now it looks like we're going to actually have to come out at them a little bit more. As Merlin Kelly's into the box, pulls it across, and... Oh, no. Oh. Hmm. Half time. I mean, that's been their only opportunity of the game, but, like, we put it on a plate for them. That's uh, not what you want to see. Second half is going to require some major digging deep. We've done it before in this save. We've come from behind in these second halves before against better sides than Brescia. So maybe we can do it again today. But I just worry about the uh, the lack of personnel that we can bring in to make a difference. Contreras. Ooh, nice little flick through the legs there. He's got it back again. Ball in. Headed away. But he should not get to the rebound. Oh, Kelly's got it though. Nice. Granados. Where's the pass though? Finds Contreras. Nice. Kelly. Cuarto. Oh, steps into for Cabrera. Wow. Milan have found an equaliser away at Lazio, which would see us sink to sixth place. We cannot have that. Cuarto. Le Bear now. Round the side. Oh, he could have flicked that round the side, maybe. Hodgerino. Cuarto can flick this down for someone. Oh, he does. Cuarto's got it back. And he's got oh, what a strike. Marco Cuarto. Brescia one, Sassuolo one. Just as Milan find a very unusual equaliser away at Lazio. We go and find, I think, a pretty deserved equaliser on the night here. Bloody hell. That is some really nice pinging little football. Jorge Dino just try something here. Guardo does okay to win that, but it falls back to him fortuitously, and that is a beautiful little effort along the floor. Goalkeeper can't get there, and Guardo's done it again. It will keep us in touch with Roma, who are still doing their thing at the moment, and beating Torino. Because they're... Oh, hello? Go and get there? Yes, put it in the box! And Le Bear! Oh, my God. Marco Quarto. Sorry, I thought the charts had gone, friends. Brescia 1, Sassuolo 2, Marco Quarto with a brace that could still keep us in the Champions League hunt. Terrible defending here, but what is Le Bear doing? I think maybe the defender getting a touch on them, and then I thought the chance had gone. But the fact that Grandos picks him out, and then on his right foot, same exact goal, basically. Bottom corner, keeper on side. It's 2-1, Sassuolo. Come on. He does like a bit of the vision that Siggy has, I find. Just a tiny bit. Belder's ball in. All the way through, and Quarto's... Oh my goodness. Quartos drops it off to Mohamed Kudus and it is now 3-1 to Sassuolo. Marco Quarto has just taken this game by the scruff of the neck in the second half. And this is what I mean about him. His big game player model citizen ability in these matches where he's like an absolute talisman for this club. When we needed him the most, he doesn't shoot here either. The fact that he just rolls that to Kudus, how is he not offside there? And now it's 3-1 and surely we're through. Well, not through, but through to the next game. Torino have got to go back, but Milan are winning at Lazio. Eight minutes left. It's 3-1 to Sassuolo now. Oh, although, could be 3-2 here. Lima. Good save from Moscatelli. Ooh, Coppodella. Murray. They're getting a lot of players forward here. Just got to make sure they don't get that key pass. Oh, and they have. Oh, it's surely too tight of an angle. No. Oh, and he's missed the follow-up. Wow, okay. Brescia have found something really late on here. I might just shut this up. Well, it looks like we... Oh, Torino have turned it around. An own goal in the 90th minute has seen them turn a two-goal deficit into a 3-2 victory against Roma, and that will see us leapfrog them. I mean, Brescia have... Uh, they came right back towards the end there, and Moscatelli bailed us out massively with a couple of saves late on and a, and a late miss, but great 10-minute period there from us. Bloody hell. We still run a luck, though, but hey, we've had bad luck this season. We got a bit of good luck there, although we took our chances. Oh, wow. Sassuolo go fourth. I did not expect this to happen today. Firstly... Fair play. To, oh, no. Lazio equalized. Lazio equalized in the 80th minute. I didn't see that. Wow. Okay. This couldn't have gone any better for us now. We go a point above Roma and two points above Milan. That is huge. And stay five points above Napoli. And that really kind of confirms some kind of Europe for us. Wow. I can't believe they turned it around, though. They were two goals down to Reno with 15 minutes to go. And they've an own goal could potentially cost Roma the Champions League. And our next game is against 16th place Spal at home. And if other things go away, we could potentially wrap it up before the Lazio game, which is so important. Although, maybe we've already beaten them this year. Let's get going. Right then, we're back. Today, we host Spal. And I've just seen that Roma are playing against Inter Milan, who are currently second in the league, chasing Lazio for the league title. Which means there is a huge opportunity here to potentially secure ourselves 
Champions League football in this game, potentially. Now, obviously, Milan might have something to say about that. Both of them, in fact, as the uh, AC side of the city are hosting Genoa in what will be considered a much easier game. But the key thing is, I'd much rather go up against uh, Milan for that spot in fourth because we have the head-to-head -head advantage over them than Roma. So all is up for grabs, really. But there's a great opportunity that potentially both us and Milan could leapfrog Roma today with a good result for Inter, who surely have to go and win, given that Lazio are potentially going to literally win their second consecutive league titles. By the way, Everton are top of the Premier League at the moment. I don't know whether they're going to stay there or not, but we're going to find out more about that at the end of the video. Also, the club have given me three more scouts, which you know how much I like to scout players. That's very useful, as well as two more coaches. I really want to make sure our coaching staff is as big as possible because some of our players were complaining about the lack of time they were getting, which is weird, but still. So we're getting th two more of those guys as well to really help bolster that. So I've tried to get the best we could get and they've all joined us, which is excellent news. So let's get into today's game against Spal. Big changes are going to be available to us today as well, which is excellent to see. So we should be able to make some... Uh, I, I, I just don't get it. Lebert, I, I understand the unhappiness thing, but like, come on now. We're not putting Flanzi up there. Pav will come back in, which is good. Uriarte, Milivojev, Dionisi in, except no, because I still want to start with Cabrera, of course, because b is my is my man. And we won't be doing kudos there. We will get Glavash back in there too. Merlin Kelly? Oh, he was really bad in the last game. And I might actually start kudos there. So I think that's probably going to be our, our best bet for the lineup for today. Some of you were talking about how maybe that goalkeeper that we're looking to bring in from Bosnia, who's coming in, could even potentially start for us next season. And I'm not opposed to it. It would just take us sort of seeing how we la how they match up in preseason, see how Luca Moscatelli does, all those sort of factors. Maybe if we got a bid, I wouldn't be opposed to it, particularly with Francesco Vicario proving his quality when he did have to step in. Fabio Casagrande, our former player, is in their team. This is massive. But I have been extremely impressed with Juan Hoca Contreras. I don't think he's had a bad game for us yet at all. And remember, we have the best defense in the league. And more important, we have not lost a home game in a domestic competition this season. The only home defeats we've suffered was against Olympiacos in that one game. That, that's the only home game we've lost as far as I know. We've got to watch out for Panico though. Huge opportunity here. Will the lads be able to pull off an absolute miracle? I didn't realize Roma's running was so difficult, honestly. That, that was the key thing that's really stood out to me today is how hard their running potentially could be. But they still have to... They can still pull that off against Inter. I'm, I'm sure of it. Getting in front is going to be key in a game like this. Not by throwing the ball straight to them. That's certainly not how you do that. And, uh, oh dear. Poor poor couple of moments there from uh, Cabrera. But that's fine. Kudus has picked it up. He's driving in field. Lebert's made a little run. He's got the ball back. Is there an overlap? No, but Pavlish has got it. Glavash knocks it down. Cuarto's in again. And it's a good save from Tosi. And Marco Cuarto has started where he left off. Oh, lordy. Okay. We've had 38 minutes now. Not seen a lot from us. In fact, they haven't even had a... They've not had a shot yet. So we want to make sure that we... Oh, Casa Grande nearly scoring against his old club here. As Milan take the lead against Genoa. Not what we need. We need to make sure that we win now. Lebert brings it down brilliantly. The other game is still nil-nil as far as I know, which would still be pretty good for us. Lebert's in behind. Max Lebert! Yes! Max Lebert, ninth goal of the season. He might be sulking, but he's given us a chance at getting into the Champions League for next season. And as things stand, we would go three points clear of Roma. We'd still be massively in a battle with Milan, but my goodness, it would give us a hell of a chance because we don't know who they're playing on the final day of the season. Great first touch from Lebert there to bring that down and hammer that one home for 1-0 over Spal. We only need a... a a Sassuolo special today. Nothing fancy is required. Go on. Second goal before half time. Kill this off. Granados' ball in Milivojev. Yes! Mihailo Milivojev. 2-0 to Sassuolo. And surely, if we can just stay decent at the back for the second period, we'll at least give ourselves a chance at remaining in fourth place, going in to the final day of the season where we will play away at Lazio. But they may already be champions by then, which would be absolutely perfect, really, for me. And that'll do it. 2-0 at halftime. I don't think we can really they can really complain. We've been much the better side here and definitely deserve the lead. And now we just need to be sensible for the rest of this game. Because there's the current league table setup. We'd be two points clear of Milan, which actually could still favour us. Cuarto. Round the side for Granados. And it's oh, just wide from Andres Granados. Could have been three. Roma have scored. Roma lead Inter by a goal to nil. The last thing we needed right now was Roma beating Inter Milan. Oh my goodness, that could be the nail, not a nail in the coffin of us, but it could make it much, much more difficult for us as Kudos is through, and it's going to be a good ball in, and it's cleared away again. Wow. We, oh, we, the last thing we needed was Roma to, I mean, it would still actually help us in a way, but it would make it much more difficult come the final day of the season as we go away to Lazio. Inter have equalized. Vinicius Jr. in the 67th minute equalizes for Inter Milan. Big, big, big goal. Just an Inter goal now. Would make me absolutely make me celebrate more than any goal we've probably scored this season, honestly. Mihalcea, Granados into the box again. He's done really well today. Mihalcea again, Granados. 
We've been superb, by the way. I know it's only 16th place, but we've been absolutely brilliant as Flans heads us three goals to the good. And this has been an absolute domination fest from start to finish. They've known what they needed to do coming into this game. And boy, God, have they done it uh, in absolutely incredible style. Just complete control of this match from start to finish. Scoring two or three goals as well. We've scored a lot more goals lately. It's a lovely ball in from Michalchea. They completely leave Flans unmarked and he lets himself yet another goal just off the bench as well. Roma take the lead again. And it's what on earth. What on earth is going on in that game? I, did you see that? Roma have beaten Inter by five goals to two. With three goals in stoppage time. I I am actually flabbergasted by that. Like, genuinely blown away. Fulani. Ball through. Blocked. And it's a good effort, but that has just completely killed my vibe. What on earth? My only hope is that that screen is messing up slightly, but I don't think it is. Um, during stream yesterday, we had this weird thing where it gave a goal for us that we hadn't scored, and then it kept going all a bit weird for the rest of the match, but I don't think that's what's happening now. As you can see, the goals are rolling in at the Olympico. I'm just completely shocked by what's happened in that match. I, I what on earth were Inter playing? I guess they were throwing everything at it to try and get the win, but I'm... Wow. So, yeah, things have definitely taken a turn going into the final day of the season. We're doing all we can. All we've had, like, we've done everything we possibly could so far. We've won both of the games that we needed to win. We now have to travel to Lazio to try and pull off a miracle, really. But it just depends on who they're playing as well. That ref definitely will matter. As Lombardo does, it's 3-0 to Sassuolo, but they don't know about what's gone on elsewhere. Great performance, by the way. Bloody hell. So, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. I have no clue how that's even happened. Romus, Boris Aslan scores five goals, firstly, in this game three of which come after the 90th minute, and Inter managed to score a goal in the 90th minute as well. Also, Juventus won 7-2 against Atalanta. Lazio drew as well, which means that... Oh, oh my God. Oh, this is going to be some final day, my friends. How many goals has Badish Aslan got this season? Right, we're back. And uh, I've just seen the fixtures on the final day. All of us are away. All of us are against really good sides. Milan travel to Juventus, who still have harboring hopes of winning the league. Potentially. I don't actually know for sure. It doesn't seem that Lazio have got it calculated yet, so that's good. We go away to Lazio, of course, and Roma travel to seventh place Napoli. Apologies if you can hear a dog barking outside as well. Weirdly, though, in my media interview right before the last game of the season, it said that the game was a dead rubber, and I'm just like, what are you on? Firstly, I don't think Lazio are guaranteed champions yet, as far as I can tell. Anyway, oh no, they are. They are. They must have a better head-to-head -head than Juventus. So that's actually good for us. It means Lazio don't have anything to play for here. But Juventus do still have games that matter, really, because they could finish behind Inter today as Inter travel to... No, they host Samp. This is going to be very interesting. In addition to that, I think the reason that the game's a bit weird right now is because Lazio are in the Champions League final. And I think because technically, even though they've already qualified for it, it's not giving up that fourth spot yet until that's been rectified. I think that's the reason for it, because uh, it does seem a bit all over the shop right now. But we're in a great position right now. All we have to do is match the results of the other two teams who are both playing very, very difficult matches. And we could get ourselves through here. And even a draw. I mean, this is going to be insane. Come on. Right then. Do I even want to make any changes to the last lineup? I, I really don't think I do, to be honest. I think we just have to go with our best foot forward. Siggy's nearly back, but not really. I think we just have to go with what we know. And what we know is that this team can do the job for us. All on the line, my friends. Champions League, Europa League, or bust. We've beaten Lazio this season, albeit it was at home, where we have actually managed to go a full season unbeaten in domestic competitions. But these guys, they're in the Champions League final, and this will be their, this is going to be their second consecutive title win as well. I think if we've got any chance here, it's going to have to come with a helping hand from elsewhere, but really. I, I just do not see us being able to pull off a result ourselves, but you never know. Mir Stranger things have happened, like that great comeback against Leicester, which obviously ended in tears. Maybe we can channel some of that energy into something ridiculous. I just want to see Napoli 1, Roma 0 or something, because I feel like Milan away at Juventus is going to be extremely difficult, but it's the Napoli... Oh, hello, Max LeBaire blocked. Granados! Just wide. I'd be a big fan of things just staying exactly how they are. I have noticed that Juventus have taken the lead against Milan, but we kind of suspected that would probably happen anyway. It's less about that game than it is. Oh, good save, Moscatelli. On the rebound, and it's taken out of play, I think, by the Lazio player. What's the other scoreline? 1-0 Roma. D'Souza. Wait, did I just see the scoreline update to... I swear it just took us down to 73 points on the updated league table, even though we haven't... Oh, that's them. Wait, hang on. They... Oh, no, it was them. Equalizer for Napoli. As things stand, 
the problem is we, we still can't afford to lose and that's going to be very difficult for us to not do in this match i sense uh we've had a good opening half an hour but the pressure from Nap uh, lazio is just starting to mount a little bit more now with bush is just unplayable he's so uh, he's the best player in the league we've got him marked out the game but it doesn't matter hopefully we don't regret that well won that was really nice work from Uriarte. Granados, round the side for Glavash. Josef Glavash is in. Oh, come on. Lazio nil. Sassuolo won on the stroke of half time. Well, not really. There's seven minutes to go and we have the lead away at Lazio. All dump. I mean, Milivojev's header there is brilliant, but this is sensational. The pass from Granados, but then Glavash actually passes it from a scoring position, puts it on a plate for Mohamed Kudus, and we have something to hang on to. This is mad. As things stand, we would be in the Champions League next season. There's a long way to go yet, for sure. Quarto over the crossbar. And we I think we've been good in this first half. Like, genuinely. Obviously, that chance accounts for a lot of our XG. But we were still massively in this against Lazio, even up until that goal. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> the, the vision from Josip Glavash there might be... He's wise beyond his years. But what I really want to see is Napoli take the lead against Roma in this second half because that would require a much larger swing. That would require Roma to actually get back into the game, even if we were to somehow turn this around and lose, which is definitely on the cards. There's a reason why, like I said, Lazio are up there in the league right now. And it isn't because they suddenly lay down a die in positions like this and they're already about to be level, but they're not because Moscatelli saves. It's offside anyway, my lord. Milan have actually equalised, so we've got to be careful. Oh, go on. Find Milivojev. Granodis' ball in Milivojev's header. Yeah! Oh, no, it's offside. There was a guy in the way, I think. I believe it was Uriate on the near post. It's gonna. It's not going to be given. Wait, why is Kim celebrating? The players are lining... Hang on, have we actually been given... Has the goal been given? For a second there. Tripping another... Tripping another player? Oh, that's what it was, because it was a foul and not an offside. The way the players all retreated to the halfway line, and everyone was... And Kim was celebrating on the touchline, I just figured we had it be a bit ridiculous for us to actually get two goals allowed by uh, VAR in the same season. Although, admittedly, that wasn't actually an offside decision, that one. It was uh, a foul or, well, perhaps a lack of a foul, but we just don't know. Quite thought into the box again, though. Go on. Win the penalty or something. Granados! Yes! It's 2-0! Mohamed Kudos at the back post and with... Wow, what is this? 40... Th no, 35 minutes left. We are two goals up away at the champions of the league. What a ball through. I don't even know. Was it Was it Granados that puts this in with his 19th assist of the season? It's an absolutely gorgeous ball. Kudos ghosting in there. Second goal of the game for Mohamed Kudos. This is what I mean about having a winger that can finish. I really do feel like that's the key. Half an hour. Two goal lead. Away at the champions. Kudos picks it up again. We go for more. And he is... Oh, that's a shocker. That is a shocker from Bajana. And that might be a red card. Lazio might be about to go down to 10. And they are. Carlo Pagana has been sent off with an... Well, for Vili. This is a long way out. Oh my God. That I thought that was creeping in. Milan winning. Milan winning actually isn't the end of the world for us. Napoli lead. Pashai has scored for Napoli. And Roma might end up missing out, not just on the Champions League, but will actually finish in sixth as things stand. Four minutes left. Even a draw now would actually be good enough because we have a better head-to-head -head against Milan. For Villa's all the way through. We need a big save here. And no, Moscatelli, please. Under his body as Favilli gets Lazio back into this match. But again, a draw would still be fine. And we're still winning as well, uh, even with this. But that is not what you want to see, really. For Favilli, I just think the defenders, they just can't quite catch it. But even then, oh, does that... Well, that actually like it through his body, but regardless, it's just the animation. Brucia bringing it forward. It's a nice ball around the side, actually. Oh my, Moscatelli, mate. These are right. Oh, it is. Gonna, I mean, we're not going to win, uh, frustratingly, but hopefully it might not matter. I, I, I'm starting to see what you guys think now about the whole um, maybe not playing Moscatelli as much next season because honestly, these are not that difficult. Like that is uh, maybe it just looks worse from that angle. It's just it makes it look worse when he gets a touch on it. Honestly, oh god. We've still got like 30 seconds to get through. It's disappointing, actually, to be 2-0 up, playing so well. They go down to 10 men and all of a sudden are magic. But regardless, it looks like it might not matter for us. It would be nice to at least not... Well, we have to not lose this game. <laughs> not losing this game is key. Pavli... No! I swear to God. Why are you not chasing him? Oh my actual God. I'm abs... Oh, please don't concede from this. Stop. Oh, God. Is that it? LeBaire, get the touch. Yes, Max. I, we've, oh my God. How did that not cross the line? 
literally going down to 10 men was the best thing they could have done. <laughs> we did nothing after getting our second goal. Bloody hell, what a game. I still think we deserve the, probably deserve the win on the night, but it doesn't matter. We got the draw and I think that is enough. I think. Surely we're fourth. Yeah. Level on points with Milan. We get fourth on head-to-head. -head. Remember, last season, we lost a Champions League spot on head-to-head -to, -head to Napoli. This year, and I want to make sure of this, we look like we've just got one on head-to-head. -head. Yes! Lazio, not Lazio, Sassuolo qualify for the Champions League on head-to-head. -head. Oh, do you remember? The end of last season, I said, this is, we come back from these things and we get better. And we have managed to do exactly to Milan what we, what Napoli did to us last season and get that spot on head-to-head. But that chance in the 95th minute or whatever that Lazio had, where the ball somehow hits both posts, somehow isn't cleared properly, and then it hits our defender on the back and goes wide, that might be the defining moment in this save, to be honest. I can't believe that. Right. <laughs> They've actually reduced our wage budget. They have reduced the wage budget and given us a smaller budget than we had last year when we weren't in the Champions League. This is going to be a difficult summer, friends. Um, I'm going to try and move some people on, but it's still going to be quite difficult. We are going to free up a bit of money just on account of the uh, some players leaving, but that is a much smaller wage budget. We had £250,000 available before, and they've actually reduced it, it would seem. <laughs> oh, no. It's like, congrats, guys. You've got to the Champions League. Here's less money. Uh, that being said, it is a group stage spot. There's no, like, silly bollocks, no qualifying. We're guaranteeing ourselves Champions League group stage money, which is freaking phenomenal. And we'll have boosted our coefficient a little bit just by driving so hard into the... Uh, the conference league too which is good what a season we come fourth in the end 74 points we do finish six points better off than last year i think we've deserved champions league 74 points most seasons would get you champions league in this league so we've done well to get it what a final day though what a battle the last three games have been uh i'm still amazed i don't know how we didn't win that in the end <laughs> just i don't know how we didn't lose it in the end it's the only time i've ever come out of the game thinking that we both should have won it and lost it at the same time wow okay um Bloody hell, that analysis video that is going to be fun as balls. So that's nine o'clock tonight. Um, let's check out our former clubs, obviously, and then we'll have a look at the other top five leagues too to see how things are going on there as well. But Leicester, sadly, still dicking about down in the third tier. Ermis, though, back up in the top flight. Nice to see. Uh, looks like they're still... I love that Carlo Duvniak's still there. That's what. That's a nice sign as well. They have survived, or looking very likely. Oh no, they have. They literally have survived. So that's good. They, they managed to come back up and do a good job to survive in the top flight. Happy days for them. Seged, once again, just being solid mid-table. I, I really do like how good they've been. Wait, sorry, what? Ferenc Varos just got relegated. They were league champions two years ago. Their lowest ever position since... Oh no, there was an 11th there. They just got relegated. Have they ever been relegated? They were relegated here, but I think this looks like a forced relegation or a demotion more than anything else. This looks like it's the first time they've ever been relegated on performance-based reasons, because this season that they were sixth and that they were in the second or third division the year after, although it looks like the second division. If anyone knows about that, do let me know. I'm interested. Osasuna under Unai Emery come 12th in the end. Pfft, useless. Where are you, Unai? You're not in the Champions League, are you? No, exactly. And as you can see, Barcelona champions. Real Sociedad second place, though. Valencia into the Champions League as well. Atletico only scraping into the Europa Conference League, which they'll probably win because they're going to be insane. To the surprise of nobody, Dino Zagreb win the league by 25 points and only incur a single defeat, which was against Osijek. Um, wow. That's, that's even better than the... We got 94 points one season, didn't we? That's insane that they've done as well as that, but they are still... Where's Valet Streakage? Oh, we went to Salzburg for 30 million. That was last season. I did not realise that. That must have been a January transfer that I didn't see. So Vlad has actually left. And to be fair, banging in goals for Red Bull Salzburg in the Premier League. Everton are champions of England. By four points, have a United Arsenal reigning champions down there as well. And wow, look at the race for the Champions League here. And City miss out on Europe entirely. City, oh wait, maybe not though. Because I think they're in the final of the Europa League. I think they're playing Bayer Leverkusen in the Bundesliga. Bayern win it. Shocker. Although actually Dortmund have won a few of these so far as well. Bayer Leverkusen into the Champions League. Hertha Hamburg coming sixth. And my boys, St. Pauli. Nice to see them in the top flight. Although it does look as though they're in a bit of trouble. Uh, yes. To the surprise of nobody, Paris Saint-Germain have won the league in France. Uh, this time, eight points clear of Lyon. Uh, Monaco in there as well. Saint-Étienne qualifying for the Europa Conference League. Metz, Strasbourg, and Dijon go down. I wasn't sure what other league to show you, but you can see that Ajax win the league. Vitesse comes second, though, to be fair to them. So that's pretty cool. Heronvain relegated quite hard. Uh, very, very hard indeed. Wow, what a finish. Like, I, I felt that we had it in us to potentially beat Brescia and Spal. Uh, and we did it in relative comfort in the end although this one had its moments but that last game against Lazio was absolutely insane I just don't know if we're going to see anything like that again in this save but the fact is 
we're in the Champions League. We've got zero money to work with. Although I'm going to try and see if I can sell someone like Merlin Kelly because I just don't think he fits the style of play we want to do. And I want to find a winger that's got better finishing than him. And if we could rejuvenate some cash by moving him on, then I will absolutely do that. But it is going to be very, very difficult to outfit a team to play in the Champions League next season with a £12 million transfer budget and barely any wage budget either. Let's think about the sort of wages that players that are that quality would actually require as well. So all I'm saying is temper your expectations about what we're going to be able to do signing-wise this summer. I'm really going to have to do some bargain hunting. And there's a few guys I've got my eyes on but it really is going to be incredibly difficult. I'm going to have to see if I can find some free transfers, some really cheap guys from maybe Eastern Europe. It's going to be extremely tough. But a good run of the Champions League could generate us a lot of income that will hopefully balance the finances a little bit more and allow us, hopefully, if we can qualify for it a second season, maybe then we'll have a bit more money to work with. It's always kind of tough in Italy. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode and this season, and I really hope you have, drop a like on the video. That would be enormous. If you are new to the channel, that would be gorgeous as well. If you could drop a, drop a like, subscribe. I stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. Go follow me too. And I'll see you guys later today for the analysis video. We're going to do a bit of a deep dive. It's going to be a good time. I'm looking forward to it very much. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.